Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's everyone doing? Hello, hello, where's everyone joining in from? We're going to be doing a live watercolor class today. We're going to be doing one of these repeating patterns. So I do have a question for those of you before we start. Uh, do you want to do another one of the honeycombs, just the normal ones? Do you want to do one on black paper? Do you want to do a funky one? Or do you want to do, I did um, mermaid, and then I've also done more like these like parrot type, feather type ones. These are really fun to do. All of these are really fun to do. So I'd love to know what you guys would like to work on today because we're going to be getting started in about three minutes. Texas, Maine, Chicago, Massachusetts, Indiana. We got one vote for funky colors. Purple honeycomb. That one was kind of fun to do. We've got two votes for some funky colors. Good morning, good morning. Richmond, hello. Three for purple, okay. Purple, we got more purple. We got one for parrots. I'll let you guys chime in for about another minute and we'll make a decision. And then we have to figure out what paper we wanna paint it on. We're definitely looking towards funky colors. So um, we could also do like a different pattern in funky colors, but I, th I think we're gonna be doing some, okay, we're doing some purples. We're definitely doing purples. Are you guys wanting to do purple honeycomb? So we got enough votes for the, uh, the purple that I think that we're gonna do that for sure. But let me know if you'd like to do honeycomb or you wanna do a different type of pattern. All right, I think we're gonna do honeycomb. We're gonna do some purpley, pinky, blue honeycombs. So this is a live watercolor class. If you feel like joining in and painting along, you're gonna need um, probably something to like trace with. I usually take a little piece of paper and then create my cutout. You're gonna need something to do the outlines with. You could use markers, pencils, pens. I'm gonna be using Posca pens specifically. You obviously need some paint, a brush, and you're gonna need some paper. Speaking of which, this one I did on a cold press paper, a cotton cold press paper, but I'm gonna let you guys choose if you want to do it on hot press paper, cold press paper, or black paper. The black paper, it will be fun, but I will have to use uh, paints that there's a chance you guys might not have. And we won't be able to see all of it. So um, this one, I kind of want to do it on this, but only if you guys really, really want me to. And also like it might be a little bit harder to follow along because not everybody's going to have that. So cold press is going to have more texture and hot press is going to be smoother. I tend to find hot press to be less forgiving. However, we could get some really interesting interactions. Looks like we might be... Okay, cold press. We're going to do cold press paper and we're going to be doing some of these purple type honeycombs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys as we get started. Everybody grab your supplies. Um, this is a block of watercolor paper, meaning that these are all glued together on the sides. 
and this is from when I was doing some testing, so I am going to have to remove this, so I will give you guys a little tip. So when you go here, see how it's shiny and then it's not shiny here? This area is not glued. So what we're going to want to do, if you're going to remove something from the block, is you're going to take either a palette knife, this is like a kind of like a palette knife, and you're just going to put it right underneath there, and then you just slide it around the edges. Let's see? Palette knife would probably be actually better, but this is what I have close on hand. So this is what I'm going to use. I just kind of slide it and rotate, and then it comes right off. And then we have a fresh new page that I don't even have to tape down because it's already there. I'm going to just put those up there so we can see it. Yeah, I should do a special live for the, the black paper. Okay, let me move some of this stuff to the side. I'm gonna be, um, I do actually have my pieces, I've saved my little things of honeycomb here. But let's go ahead, a lot of people had questions on how to actually create these. So I'm gonna show you how I how I did this. It's not gonna be super scientific. <laughs> um, you could definitely print these out and then trace them on so that you actually have a real one. But usually what I do is I kind of come in and make about a square approximately. And then we know that we need to have it, these points are all, we're basically just gonna snip off each corner. Let's see, snip, nope, this is not right at all. Hold on, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, um, oh, here. So I, I'm gonna start just by cutting these. And right now I don't have a great one, so I need to kind of start to work on these angles. So I just kind of adjust. And then I would cut here. And then these angles are a little bit too harsh, so I'm going to make them a little bit less. We want these all to be kind of equal sides. See how it's getting closer? It's still not quite there, so I'm adjusting the angle. Now we're getting a little bit closer. These ones still need to be a little bit less sharp. And then here. There we go. That's a pretty good one. It's not perfect but that will definitely work for what we need to do. Okay. So let me just double check here. Does it ever bleed through the paper? Yeah, and the comments are correct. This is a heavier paper, and it's also a watercolor paper. Most watercolor papers, even the lighter weight ones, don't really bleed through. And this is 140 pound, and at that weight, we're not gonna have any problems. Like this actually came off a block. You can see there's nothing that's bled through on the back. This one came off a different block, also nothing came through. This one came off a different brand of paper, nothing bled through. Um, and th those were all painted on blocks. So, anyways, that's how we're going to make this little thing. What I'm going to do next, what we're going to actually do is we're going to start to make our little honeycomb bits. So what we want to do is pick whatever shape you're going to do. And you don't actually have to do this with honeycomb if you don't want to. I'm going to make use the bigger one just so it's going to go a little bit faster. But I'm going to take this Posca pen and I'm going to start with the pink. And I'm just going to place it here and we're just going to outline it. We're just gonna make this pattern all the way down the page. I might actually, for this one, what I think I'm gonna play with, just so that we have time, is I'm gonna really concentrate these up here, but then I'm gonna kind of taper them off so that we're not filling the entire page and it has kind of a, a rugged edge to the bottom, just to kind of give us a little variation. So I'm gonna add in another one which will also save me a little time today because these can take a little bit of time. Whoop. And I'm just going across the page. We will be coming back in and I'm gonna be kind of 
rounding some of these corners and thickening some areas just to give it a little more natural look. And I'm using a Posca pen, which is um, going to have acrylic in it. And it is gonna kind of move across the page a little bit if I'm not careful, and that's okay because we're gonna paint over it. So while I'm doing this, and you don't have to do this with the exact same colors that I'm using, while I'm working on this, and you're working on this, also I wanna know what colors are you gonna use? Are you gonna use purples, pinks? Um, and then also what's your favorite watercolor brand? Yeah, you can use pencils, you could use markers, you could use anything you want to for this. You don't have to use Posca pens. I just, I'm having a little little love affair with Posca pens recently, so it's kind of my latest obsession. It's also come up and just, those would come right up there. There we go. Sometimes I'm gonna skip around a little bit because this will actually kind of help fill in a couple areas without me having to do every single one. But I will go back and forth so that it kind of keeps it a little bit more regular. Using pink Sharpie, oh, that will, that'll look really cool. You can usually also buy individual, like if you go into a specialty art supply store, a lot of times they have a display of Posca pens where you can actually buy individual colors. So that would be another way to kind of save on Posca pens if you're in the market for them, but you're like, oh, that pack is expensive. Um, that's another way to, to grab Posca pens for a little bit cheaper. You could just get like one or two colors instead of having to buy a whole set. This row here is probably gonna be my last like full, full, full row. And then I'm gonna to start to kind of make these a little bit more jagged as I go down. You're making bracelets? Oh, fun. What kind of bracelets are you making? I used to um, I used to do a ton of stuff with like beads and things like that when I was younger. I haven't actually played with beads in a long, long time. And as you can see, when we're doing this, this doesn't need to be perfect. Like none of these lines are, are absolutely perfect. I have seen a lot of you using a stencil that makes things like really, really neat. And it does look good because it's like, there's really small and very, very regular. Love that. So anybody who's watching today, have you act, have you actually tried this out yourself? Because I have, I've been getting, I've been loving, 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 loving all the tags I've been getting in people trying out the honeycomb. It's so fun to see see you guys trying stuff. I just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun for me. All right, I think this is gonna be the last one that I draw on here. So we're gonna have a little bit of a jagged bottom. That's also gonna give me a little bit more leeway so that I don't have to fill the entire page and we can focus on this a little bit more. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to make sure I connect all these points that didn't quite connect when I was tracing. And I'm gonna kind of round off the edges just a little bit. And if I want to, I'm gonna kind of um, thicken up a couple of these lines and just kind of quickly go in here. How big How big is everybody painting? This might've been a little bit ambitious of a size of paper for me to use today during class, but you know, we're going for it. It would be cool for business cards. So the pen I'm using is a Posca pen. They're not really pens, they're like um, acrylic 
marker, acrylic marker. So we've got a felt tip pen with acrylic um, kind of inky type paint inside of it. And I just think this is so fun when you come in here and touch up these areas. Look at how much more it actually kind of starts to look like honeycomb with just a couple little kind of flicks of this as you go on. I'm going to try to actually kind of work from, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to work from the right side of the page, or the left to the right, so that I'm not smearing it so much. And every once in a while I'm going to thicken one of these lines, because bees are quite tidy, but, you know, nature is natural, and so there's going to be some variation. And if we build that in, it's actually going to kind of help us in the future because then if we mess up somewhere in here, if it already has some nat some natural variation, then it's not such a big deal. Okay. You like the Ardex acrylic markers? Hello, hello. So for anybody who is new, I forgot to do my little introduction. My name's Lacey. I'm the artist behind Rebel Unicorn Crafts. We do uh, bi-weekly, so every other week we do a live watercolor class together. And it's either something you guys have requested or it's something that we're, we've been working on um, in my shorter videos. But this gives us a chance to like really slow it down and you can see me work on it in real time and you can ask all those questions that I can't even really touch the topic of while we're trying to fit things into, you know, a minute or two. <laughs> and obviously you can ask questions about any of my recent videos. Like I do actually have some more thoughts on that Upo paper. Um, I got a lot of people saying it's used for alcohol inks, and I do I do know that um, I don't have any alcohol inks currently. I tossed all of mine because they leaked everywhere, which was a nightmare. And I don't know if I'm going to try them again. But the paper itself does actually say on it that it's suitable for watercolor, acrylic, and alcohol mark or alcohol ink. So. Um, yeah, that was why I was testing it with watercolor. <laughs> because that's what it said that it was for. I don't think I'm going to be using a lot of Yupo paper going forward, just as a spoiler alert. It is kind of fun for some projects, and I did get some suggestions that I might want to try out on it, but watercolor paper, something about the water, how the color moves on it is just so satisfying. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jenna. This is a good point. If you're using a pen uh, that is water soluble, it is not um, waterproof. So like a Sharpie would be great for this. But other types of pen, they are going to run. So you could wait. You could do this with pencil and then go over it with pen at the very end. Um, I should have mentioned that. I'm so sorry. Uh, if you're like, oh, no, I'm already part of the way through this and I've used a pen that is not a waterproof pen, well, now you have yourself a fun little exercise in figuring out how to make sure you're gonna make these little bubbles where it's not going to touch them. So you can actually turn this into a little brush control exercise. But yeah, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Since this is acrylic, this isn't gonna run um, because and I also, I don't usually touch these very much. See how there's actually a little bit of area that I don't fully touch? I kind of like the look of that. That's going to be a personal preference. You might be like, no, I want all of mine to be completely filled. Um, but I think for some reason there's like, I love art that has little incompleted parts to it. Like I love sketches. I think it's because my brain likes to fill in the gaps. Okay, so we can actually, after I'm almost done with this part, we can come in and on some of these I've done something that I ended up really liking where I added some little kind of highlights to certain areas on these and I'm, I might do that real quick because it doesn't take very long.
There. And look how much more that looks like honeycomb than when we very first started, just by doing some of those little round offs. So I am gonna take a white one and on here in just a couple areas, I'm just gonna kind of flick in a couple spots just to kind of create a couple little like highlights where it might be catching the light. Just real quick through here, just gonna add a little bit of interest to this. Sometimes the small little details are kind of what make a project stand apart. You don't have to do, when we're doing my classes, you get to control everything that you're doing. So if you're, if you're like, that's not a choice I would like to make, don't make that choice, that's totally fine. All right, so we are actually going to, we wanna make sure that this is nice and dry before we get started. So we're gonna actually, um, we're gonna make a plan on the colors. I'm kind of thinking for these purples and um, for really vibrant purples and blues and pinks, I think I'm actually gonna use two different watercolors just cause I'm kind of um, having a little love affair with them. I have to find the one though. The first is gonna be this set of core. I love their purple, I love their pink, and their blues, oh my goodness, I love them so much. But the second one is actually one uh, that my friend, the Mightier Pencil, by the way, if you haven't checked out the Mightier Pencil, she is absolutely amazing. Um, she does a lot of sketching and she's just, I don't know, she even got like a new camera recently and I'm just like watching all of her stuff in absolute awe. But a while ago we made little packs where we, we just sent each other like little gift packs. And in that one of hers, she sent me some colors. Um, she made me like a little palette of tester colors. And one were these um, mission gold colors that are just absolutely stunning. Where did I put those? Oh no, am I not gonna be able to find them? I think they're out in my living room. I will be right back. Uh, in the comments, tell me your favorite animal while I'm gone for 30 seconds. I like dogs and elephants. I'm back, by the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this is a little set that you can see these are hand-filled pans from tubes that Natasha made for me. And some of these colors are just, oh my goodness, they are stunning. That's actually what I used on these ones. Whew, they are good. Manatees, oh, man manatees are cool. Birds are cool. I'm getting, I'm becoming a bird person, man. All right, so we're gonna be using colors that I don't, I don't usually feature either. I mean, I do talk about this brand sometimes, but this is the first time here with these ones. You could use a water pen or you can use just normal brushes. Um, we could use, I think I'm gonna start with this, but I think I might also grab like a little angle brush or something in case I start to feel like it's just taking me forever to fill in all these details. Maybe a flat brush, I don't know. I've got, I also have this. This came with my Hemi palette. <laughs> Maybe that'll be nice for making some straight lines. Oil-based pen would be good. Yeah, as long as it dries. Flamingo, oh, well, flamingos are fun. They are really cool creatures. There was a podcast I listened to a while ago where they talked about how metal they are. <laughs> okay, so this is an exercise in, uh, you can do wet on wet. Uh, so we'll, we'll play around with this. In general, what I have found with these different exercises is that it's kind of nice if you concentrate the darker colors at least closer to the middle, um, which will kind of help sink the middle down and give a little more depth. But the other thing is I will kind of butt some of the same colors up next to each other. So notice that like this one goes here and then it goes into here, which then kind of leads into there. And I kind of try to do that to help kind of 
make it a little more cohesive, even though it's just chaos. So that's what we're looking for, cohesive chaos today. And we're gonna try a bunch of different techniques. Um, this is gonna be fun to do because, especially in those short videos, I can't really show you guys all of how I'm kind of trying to manipulate or how much water I'm using because I have just a few seconds to show you. So I'm gonna put a bunch of water in my brush. And on this first one, let's just do a full wet on wet one. Now, both of these colors that I have here, they actually don't need a lot of pre-wetting and I don't have my spray bottle on hand, so I'm not going to. But if you have colors that need a little pre-wetting, oh, look at that, it has a smiley face. Can you see its face? <laughs> this one's smiling at us. <laughs> Um, but what you want to do is, is pre-wet them if you need a, um, if, if you, if you need it to be pre-wetted. These ones don't tend to need a lot of pre-wetting. I can just kind of dip into them. Um, both of these brands are kind of unique in that. I am using a quill brush and I'm going to, but you could use whatever brush. This is, this is not a brush picky exercise. Use whatever your favorite brush is. And we're just going to fill one of these little hexagons with water which I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see very well. If we hold it up to the light, you can see the shine. See, I've got some water in there. See, it's a little puddled on one side and it's a little unevenly filled, which is gonna be fine for this exercise. And then we're just going to start to, I'm just gonna dip into one of these colors and let's just run this along the edge. This is why I love this core set, because look at that, I love their pink color. Oh my goodness. I think I want to throw in a little yellow on one side of this, or a little orange. Let's go with some of this orange. Just I wash my brush. Now I'm going to tap in here, and on this side I'm going to put a little of this orange. Let's just swirl that around. And then let's go for this beautiful, wonderful, this purple in here is so good. Oh yeah, look at that. I was like fireworks. I would, I think I would rather watch that on the 4th of July. <laughs> and then I think I'm gonna throw in one more. This is a really kind of bright pink color, I believe. I don't have a ton of experience with this one because it's newer, but I just kind of want to fill in this area right here just with a little, little pop, little pop of color there. If you're like, ah. Uh. Now what I would do in this exercise is I would just leave that. This, there's a lot of chaos going. In this exercise, I would just let it be chaos um, because each one of these, if you look at any one of these individually, you're like, mm, that's weird. Oh, well, that's kind of weird. But then kind of all collectively together, they make this like really pretty story. So I'm just gonna leave that. But you could at this point mess with it a little bit more. Now the next one, I'm not gonna do straight wet on wet. It will kind of be, become a wet on wet exercise, but I'm gonna start with wet on dry, which means I'm not gonna pre-wet the paper. I am gonna be using a lot of color and as we go, it's going to kind of turn into that. So I did mention that sometimes I like to use some of those colors to kind of connect. So let's start with a little bit of this orange. See, it kind of comes up here. Let's bring it up a little bit more here. And then I'm gonna kind of wash my brush. Let's soften that. And then let's dip into some of that bright, bright pink. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna kind of smush this around. And this is this is actually more how I usually paint instead of just doing the wet on wet because I kind of like having somewhere in between control and no control. Cause like, look, I'm able to get some of those wet on wet things going there, but it was a little bit more predictable. I was able to keep things a little more where I want them to be. And let's throw in one of these blues. Let's throw in a little of this blue kind of right in here. Okay, it's it's kind of sticking where it, where it was. So I think I'm actually going to wash my brush and then let's just kind of smoosh it around a little bit. There, it's a little bit better. Just gonna keep that down there. Looks like an eye. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? Do you want me to bring, uh, I feel like this might be better if I brought the camera down a little bit more. We're not gonna be able to see quite as much with the colors and the example and stuff. Um, but would, would it be easier for you guys to be able to see this a little bit closer? 
I'm not using masking fluid to keep my white. I think the podcast was every little thing. It wasn't just about flamingos, but they had an episode about flamingos, and then it kind of became a running joke within the podcast. All right, for now, it looks like we can see it okay. In a little bit, we'll, we'll do one that's up close, but let's wait for a minute. All right, so we're going to move on to the next one. I feel like I need to kind of add in, since I've got a lot of really brightness going here, I think I'm going to go here, and for some reason, yellow is calling to me, and we'll do a yellow into kind of a pink and a purple type color thing here, um, which I, I think, for some reason, it just listen to your gut. When your gut tells you to do something, do it. Um, so I've got either a lemon yellow. I think I'm actually going to go for the more of this yellow ochre. It's kind of a little bit, it's a yellow, but it's going to be a little bit toned down. I'm just going to bring this in here, right up kind of close to the edge. Let's wash our brush. And I do, I think I wish I would have used the lemon yellow, which was what I was initially thinking. So let's just throw some of that in there. There we go. That's a little brighter. That's a little more what I wanted. Then let's go into some of that super duper bright pink color. This is like an opera color. I don't think that's what Mission Gold calls it, but. I'm just going to bring that up into here. And then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm, going to, I'm just trying to create some variation. I want these all to be not perfect. And then I think this is a purple. So I'm just going to roll my brush around in this. And let's put some of that right in here. And look how much these are changing as we go. So this, this is another reason why I like to kind of just set and let these and forget because they do some interesting things on their own when we don't over control them. Like look how much that one has changed. Even that one. I think I'm going to put a little more of this purple right in the middle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That had more of a reaction than I thought that was going to, but how cool is that? So these ones are Core, Q-O-R. It's Golden's watercolor brand. And then these are Mission Gold. It did kind of look like a heart. All right, I still have some of that purple on my brush. So I'm just going to bring that. Wow, that is... The Core ones are so pigmented from the very beginning. These are a little more pricey. Um, I personally, this is kind of my... Uh, hot take, but I personally like Core better than Daniel Smith. Um, that's that's my my super hot take. I do like Daniel Smith, but all right, I got some pink. Just something about the colors and the way they move. Love them. Okay, we're gonna put a little of that bright bright pink here. And then I think I'm going to throw some bright blue. This is like my favorite blue of all time. This is their phalo blue. Let's put a little of that in there. Just let that do its little thing. I do not have, you can. Here, let's do another, we'll do another wet on wet one. I've been starting um, on it dry. So let's do the next two. I'm going to do, actually, let's do them right here. This one and this one. I'm going to do this one wet on wet, and I'm going to do this one, which is like a, it's wet on dry, but then not wet on dry, kind of wet on wet at the end. Um, but we're going to place the colors in about the same places, and we'll see the differences between how they react. So this first one, let's get it wet. And I will have to try to remember approximately what I did. So I'm wetting this entire hexagon here. And then let's start with some of this pink because I feel like that's going to kind of connect those three together. So we're going to start with some of this bright pink and this is going in on a pre-wet hexagon here. Let's go into a little purple over here.
I'm gonna try to drop in a little yellow in this one area right here. And then let's do a little of this blue, which is kind of closer to like an ultramarine right in here. Okay, I'm gonna let that one be. And we're gonna try to do the same thing, but I'm not going to pre-wet the hexagon on the next one. So I'm gonna start with this pink and I put it about here and kind of come down to here. Then I brought in with this purple, I believe. Oh gosh, I should have I should have remembered a little bit better here. So this is wet on dry, um, but we're gonna kind of do a little pseudo uh, activity. Then I put in a little yellow kind of here. And so now at this point is where I would kind of start to wet my brush and I would kind of start to soften some of those edges in. And I feel like, you know, obviously we can get, it's a little bit more concentrated if we start wet on dry, but we still, still do need to add some of this blue right in the center. All right, what do we think? What do you like better, the wet on wet or the wet on dry? Let's look at them a little bit closer. So most people like the wet on wet, um, but a few people do like wet on dry. I tend to kind of like this like mixture of wet on wet, wet on dry personally. Um, but you know, that's what this is all about is everybody has a little different. This one looks really funny. <laughs> it's making me giggle. It's giving bagel. <laughs> Yeah, donut, <laughs> a rainbow bagel. Remember when the rainbow bagels were a trend a while ago? Like everybody was eating rainbow bagels. Also, I feel like I'm saying bagel really weird. Like I feel like Britta from Community right now. Bagel, bagel, bagel. I feel like I say it normal most of the time, but right now it's not happening. All right, I'm gonna keep filling these up. How's everybody doing so for, so for, so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my head now about pronunciations. How's everybody doing so far? Are you painting along or are you gonna do this later? Also, does anybody have, what do we wanna think? Do you guys wanna do any different colors in here? Do you want me to, should I add in some shimmer on something? Let's put a little bit of this blue, actually quite a lot of this blue here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting there. Oh no, Jenna, I hope you feel better. I really appreciate you coming in and helping answer questions. I really do appreciate that. We have a lovely community here where we help answer questions. Uh, Monica and Jenna have been super helpful today. I, I really appreciate that. We're gonna be painting today and together and maybe somebody else, since, since Jenna's gotta lay down, can take a turn helping answer the frequently asked questions. Um, I do try to keep an eye on the comments, but it is also hard to try to paint, explain, and read them. So thankfully we have a very helpful community and I love that. This is not liquid latex. This is just the, this is Posca pen and it's just gonna be there forever. I hope that you feel better. Okay, so we're gonna add in some, I, 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 let's, let's throw in some metallics. For some reason, gold feels like it's gonna clash to me with these color schemes. It, it's not, but like in my gut, it's telling me that. I kind of think I'm gonna use instead this like copper color. So again, I don't have my spray bottle, so I have this little pipette. I'm gonna pre-wet that because it's gonna take a second to gel together to get ready to go on there. 
And I'm gonna have to use this a little bit sparingly since I haven't actually incorporated it in all of these. So I feel like I'm just gonna have to put it in like three or something so that it doesn't feel like, oh, half of this is metallic and half of it's not. I mean, I guess that doesn't really matter because we're just painting together to have fun. Oh, before I forget, I'm gonna come in and just kind of add some color to these top ones. Let's add in a different reddish pink color. I'm just gonna kind of, these ones we don't have to have quite as much, um, you know, detail on because, well, it's just a little bit of it, so I'm just going to kind of drop a couple colors in here. Let's put a little blue. A little bit of blue. There we go. Maybe this one is more blue forward. And that one. And then let's get some let's get some purples. I feel like we need some purple up here. And a little more of that super bright, bright yellow, or yellow, pink color, whoops. There, they don't, they don't need to have a ton of detail. I do like the ones, my favorite ones that I've done in here are the ones that I have featured a little yellow, a little bit of uh, orange, because they do kind of make some neutrals in there, and then it does just like, oh, it really catches the eye. Oh yeah, don't forget Mother's Day. These, I do think, I haven't actually tried it yet, but I do think one of these would look really cool in a frame, or at the very least as a little card, like you could just fold one of these over and write on the inside of it. I think it would make a great card. And there's gotta be tons of bee puns for moms. What made me think about honeycomb? Um, well, it, the funny thing is it actually started when I was making those pots and I was making the lumpy bumpy things that kind of reminded me of like the hives. And then I, then I just kept thinking about bees. I do have a video I filmed the other day where I'm actually gonna show you how to paint a bee. So don't worry, that is coming. All right, so this next one, I'm actually gonna start with the metallic. Cause we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some metallics in here. So this is a copper metallic. This is actually one that I've made. This is called Spellbound. I do sell this one. I'm gonna just kind of put it in a couple spots there. And I feel like this will bump up really nicely next to some pinks. So we're gonna do that. And let, we're gonna throw in some yellow because I did say that I've been liking the ones that I threw some yellow in. So let's put that right kind of over here. It's gonna combine to make kind of a orangey color. And then let's go purple heavy in the center. I'm thinking this purple. Oh yeah, lots of things about being, un you're an unbelievable mother. You're a beautiful mother. Does anybody have fun Mother's Day plans? I just, I just feel like I need a little, hmm, there, I don't know why. This one, this one is, uh, I don't love all of my choices that I put there. We're gonna have to wait and see because this one might develop into something really interesting in a minute, especially once we can see the metallics on it. You're not gonna be able to see it while it's still wet. Oh, you bought one of the sample sets? Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Going to the Ren Fair? I need to go to the Ren Fair. We wanted to go last year and then I totally forgot until the whole season was over. The queen of our hive. Oh, you guys are good at this. Taking your kids to sleep over at your mom, then bowling with friends. Oh, that sounds fun. Is it a bunch of mom friends and you guys are all just kind of blowing off steam? All right, we're gonna go yellow heavy on this one, but I'm gonna use this yellow ochre type color. And we're gonna go into that opera pink, I think. Oh, Mother's Day already happened in the UK. That's, isn't it funny how we celebrate the same holidays, but just at like randomly different times? Well, I like this one so far. 
I'm gonna have to, I wanna throw in some really dramatic blue in here. This is either gonna make it or this is gonna break it. Whoa. Oh, it might, it might've broke it. <laughs> I need to remember that some of these colors have that real of color. And I am gonna, okay, this ring here is bothering because it's a little too green for what I was wanting. So I am gonna take my brush and just kind of dry it off and I'm just gonna pick up some of this color. There, that, that looks a little better. I think I'm also gonna smush in a little pink there on top. There, I think I, think I saved that one. But again, none of these need to be absolutely perfect. I don't know if you've kind of noticed, but like each one individually, as we kind of talked about earlier is like, Hey, that's kind of weird looking. Um, this one is still kind of weird looking because <laughs> it's the rainbow bagel. But as they kind of all come together, it does kind of complete this whole little thing we're working on. Yeah, the current one's a continuation of the top one. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I can totally see that. Okay, I wonder if we're gonna start to be able to see some of the shine a little bit from, it's still a little bit too dry to, or too wet to see um, the metallics that we put in there. All right, the next one, I feel like I've ruined the last couple that I've put blue in. Like I either need to really commit to the blue or not put blue. So I think I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on this one. And I really liked how it was just with some of the pinks and reds and purples and stuff. So we're, we're just gonna focus on that for this next one. Starting with a nice bright yellow color, then I'm gonna come in with some of this bright, bright pink. I'm gonna wash my brush so that I've just got some water in it and let's just smush this down. This is what I mean by like kind of a combo of wet on wet, wet on dry. I usually like to put my first couple strokes down wet on dry, dry and then I can kind of move things around. Let's put some of this reddish color kind of in the center. Oh yeah, let's put a little more of that super bright pink color right here. That's kind of fun. Maybe a little bit of that orange. Yeah, okay. My, my gut tells me to not mess with that one because I've messed with the last few and like, they are kind of interesting, but something about that is a little more pleasing to me for that specific one. So that's gonna be my really bright one. So in order to make that work with kind of the rest of the composition, this next one is gonna kind of have to be like half and half so that it kind of feels like it's all, you know, like that's a focal point to a degree. What if we put metallic on watercolor? Um, so I did put some metallic watercolor on here, but you could absolutely at the very end come in with some like, metallic markers or whatever you have. This is this is such a fun um, exercise to paint. So I highly recommend if if you've got a few minutes to, to give it a try. This has been uh, yeah, this has been one of the ones where you guys have tagged me like the most in and I absolutely love it. It has been so fun to see everything you guys are painting. I'm gonna come back in. Let's let's use some of these core ones. I feel like some of these have kind of darker or a little more um, moody type colors. Um, um, not really, but like in comparison to the Mission Gold ones. So this one, we're, we're keeping it bright on one side, but then we're gonna make this one a little bit darker so that it kind of fits in a little bit more to the rest of this piece. I'm gonna start with this purple. There we go. Just a little more purple. Let's really kind of load that in there. And maybe just a little bit up there. There we go. See how that one then kind of helps create, at least, at least in my mind, I guess I don't know if it really does, but in my mind, it kind of helps make this super bright one that doesn't totally fit with the rest of it. It at least kind of helps 
bring it in and I'll kind of do that in most of these other ones where I'm going to kind of help bring it into it a little bit more. All right, I'm going to bring in a little bit more up in this one. I'm going to do some more metallic. This is that metallic copper color. These little hexagons, when we put the metallic in there, they're going to be way more spectacular at the very end once it's dry. Okay, let's put, let's try that super duper bright pink with that copper. Oh yeah, that's a nice color combination. And let's put a little purple in the center. This is this is like one of my I don't I don't know what made me think to do this a couple weeks ago, but yeah, it's like I just sat down and I was like, I have to paint honeycomb. I mean it was after I made those little pottery things. I made myself a whole little set the other day. I made a little like parfait cup that is in that kind of lumpy bumpy shape, and then I put a bee on it. And then I made a honey holder that's in the honeycomb shape and has a little bee on it, and I made a mug, <laughs> and then I even made a little spoon rest that has a bee on it. I got, I have, I don't know, I've, I have bees on the brain, very clearly, I have bees on the brain. Yes, you should definitely watercolor for a Mother's Day card for your mom. I'm going to start with blue on this next one, just to kind of keep the dark and moody thing going over here. I'm gonna actually start by kind of placing it in the center. I've been working kind of around the edges first. This one, let's, let's work kind of in the opposite direction. So we start with blue, then let's throw in a little purple. And then let's put some of this like reddish pink, like a magenta type color in a couple areas. And then I'm going to try to sneak in a little orange. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I actually kind of like, I might do a couple where I work from the inside out. Because I like that one. That seemed to work pretty good for me. So that, let's keep doing that. All right. I'm going to... um. I am going to bring you down a little bit closer because I know that at least a couple people wanted to see this a little bit up close and personal. Um, so we're going to do one or two with it really close. If you are sensitive to like things moving and fast movements, uh, just look away for a second. I'll let you know when we're resettled. Um, but it's going to happen in three, two, and one. All right, we're, we're back, we're back in business. So if you want to, um, you can look at the screen again if you were one of the people who have motion sickness. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna, we're just gonna do a couple of these up close so that we can see how things kind of move around. And we're gonna start, right? Doesn't that look, this one, like if I had a magic, ball that I looked into, I would want it to look kind of like that. We're going to start again from the center out. So I'm going to start, this is that core purple. We're going to really, whoa, that was a lot of that in there. That's going to be a dark, dark color. So I'm going to wash my brush and let's, let's wash that out just a little bit. So it's not quite that intense. And I'm going to bring in a little of this quinacridone magenta on the edges. Let's bring in some of that super duper bright pink kind of along here. And then we're going to try to sneak in a little yellow along the sides. Now it is going to mix with some of those colors and it's going to kind of become a little more neutral of a yellow color, which is fine because we've got some really bright colors and having some of the neutrals is going to help. All right, we're going to start this next one 
with, um, I'm gonna go a little bit softer on the colors on the next one because I've really leaned into some of the darker colors here. Um, but we're gonna actually start with some of the metallics on this next one. Yeah, it kind of does look like a, a flower, like a, um, what are those? What flower does that look like? Like a morning glory? No. Uh, yeah, it does look, it, they, they, look at how interesting some of these look up close, but especially that one. <laughs> this is one of the things I love about watercolor. Like I kind of know what happened but I also don't entirely know if I can repeat it. We can try, we can try and I'll try to explain what happened and we'll try to make another one. Petunia, that was it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. All right, so this is this, this is not the one that I'm trying to do the donut in, but I'm starting with a kind of a copper metallic. And then let's go into a little purple. Let's, I haven't tried any yellow with the copper. I don't know if that's gonna work, but we're gonna put a little bit in right along here. And then let's go with some of that kind of pinkish red color. I'm just kind of smushing it around. I feel like I need a little variation within that copper area. Let's put a little more purple right in the center. Just kind of touching it in. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come over onto this side. Also, let's let's go out a little bit further so that you can see some of the other stuff. Again, if you are sensitive to motions, we're going to be moving out again. So look away and I will let you know when it's safe to look back. We're going to be moving in three, two, and one. All right, we're safe again. You can come back. So for those of you, uh, some of you might already know. How many of you have a hunch on why that happened with the little donut ring? Put, put a hand in the comments if you, if you suspect you know the reason. We're painting on a watercolor paper that I then used uh, Posca pins to make little outlines. All right, I'm gonna put my hand up because I only suspect I, you know, I don't entirely know. But what we're talking about is we got this weird like ring thing happening, this donut, because I'm hungry. <laughs> that that is also a, a possibility, a strong possibility, because I am kind of hungry. But um, we got a couple people who think they know. Good. All right. So what I suspect is it was that I so everything was wet, and then I added in this core, I believe it was this one, this core purple. Now in general, this core purple, I'll just show you, it has kind of this dispersion effect. So if we, the same thing actually happens with a lot of the core colors on a really wet thing, there's gonna be almost this like wave where it kind of pushes it out. But look how where I put it, it also, is that gonna focus on that? It also kind of dries the paper there. So it was wet enough to where it rode that wave, but because I touched all the way down to the paper level with a ton of that color, it actually kind of dried it right where I touched because all the pigment was there and all the binder and stuff was there. And then it, it started to dry in the center faster than anywhere else. So we're gonna try to replicate the effects of that down here over in this one. So we're gonna start with, let's start with a lot of the same colors. I mean, we have a lot of that bright, bright pink. We have some yellows. Reminds you of an Asian poppy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm trying a new thing. They were supposed to be um, like a gradient from this color to this color. I don't know how successful I was at it, but I also spent like a full day where I had, um, cause I used a sponge, <laughs> where I had it all around, all parts of my fingers. All right, so I need to make sure this is nice and wet. Okay, this is very wet. And then we're gonna come in with this color. I'm gonna put a lot, so it's like clumped on the brush almost. 
and I didn't get quite as much reaction, but I do think we're still gonna get that donut effect. Maybe I need a little more water on my brush. There. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get the donut effect there too. Just not quite as much. I think I had a little more water in my brush. But see how we're getting that outside ring and then the inside ring? And how the inside part is drier? You can see there's not a reflection there. So sometimes when you actually load your brush with so much of the watercolor that it's like you're smearing it on rather than kind of dropping it on, it can actually dry the paper faster in certain areas. So let's actually, okay, so Monica brought up about a bloom. Um, a bloom is a little bit different. It's, I mean, it's kind of what's happening. Usually back runs happen where um, as it dries, it does that. And this is kind of a bloom. Yeah, you are kind of right. It is kind of a bloom. But usually when we're talking about blooms, we're dropping water onto color, which is then kind of pushing the pigment away. So we're creating like a, a void of pigment when we're doing that. Let's, let's try to add some blooms. Just We're just playing now at this point because this whole thing, it, it already looks really cool. So we, we're just going to kind of go into the fun part of this. So... Uh, I actually don't know how well either of these brands bloom because most these are not very granulating colors and granulating colors are the ones that are going to be a little bit better for creating blooms, but we're going to try. Uh, so we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to try to add, make a bloom kind of towards the edge of one. We want to work pretty wet and a little bit quickly. Now let's throw some purple in this one. That one looks real goofy. It does not look as cool as that one. That's okay. I'm also gonna, I am gonna try to throw in some blue. I haven't had a ton of success with the blues today, but there, kind of like that. And then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm gonna tap it so I have just a little water in it. And then we're gonna try to create a bloom around the edge. We kind of want to wait until uh, it's not water that's just like rolling around. We want to be able to kind of see the texture. See how we can see the texture of the paper towards the top? That's going to be our best chances for creating this bloom where we push away. Yep, so you can kind of see that happen there. It's still a little bit too wet for this, but so push away. So then we can kind of create that bloom there. I like to use blooms in like landscapes. This is just gonna create some interesting texture in this one. Just as kind of a fun thing. So far, I think my favorite square is this one or that one. How can you tell if a color is more granulated? The best way to tell that I find is I will get a really textured paper. Um, this is kind of textured. And then I'll take this and you put a pretty heavy amount on and then I will wash my brush and kind of create a little like gradient down. And then I would leave this really, really wet and let it dry. And then you'll just come back and you'll see like, hey, did it settle more into certain areas of the texture of the paper? You might be able to actually see some of the individual granules. Um, so you do have to do a little testing. We'll revisit that little thing I just made in a minute and see what it does. All right. Oh, we're we're almost at time. All right, I'm gonna try to let's try to quickly put all these together. Um, I need to blab a little bit less. I'm just gonna try to put these together so you can kind of see a finished product. I I hate leaving these without you guys having at least somewhat of a a resolution to what I was doing. I'm gonna go with blue over here. I know I've been kind of unlucky with the blues but we're doing it. A little blue there. L little Bell Blue and the Man on the Moon. That's a song, right? Did I make that up? I mean, like, I know that they're in the Man on the Moon part, but the Little Bell Blue. See how I'm trying to butt some of those lighter colors to make that one make sense up and next, next to it? So we're going to kind of do that again here. I'll also throw that in right here. 
blank space at the bottom. I just, I wanted to see what it was going to look like to have it just kind of like a little more jagged at the bottom. I don't have a real plan. I'm just going to leave it because I just wanted to see. It's like one of the few variations I haven't really played with. With I have, as if you were here at the beginning, you saw all my different variations of the honeycomb. I have been obsessing over this. So um, I have tried a lot of things, but I have not tried the jagged edge at the bottom. Okay, it is good. <laughs> it is a song. <laughs> oh man. All right. Putting a little purple in there. I like that. I like that one. Oh, you guys can't even hardly see that one. I'm going to start with a little purple here. Yeah, if you do try it, I have been loving seeing it. If you tag me and if you do a post or whatever, I love seeing them. I'm going to put some bright yellow here. I'm kind of just, I am going to go, I'm going into turbo speed now. So uh, if you have specific questions, please ask them, but I'm going to just kind of try to finish this off so that we can see, we can see the whole picture with it, kind of this jagged edge at the bottom. I can always come back in and finish the bottom if I decide, but I wanted to see if it would look neat to have some of that negative space just at the bottom. Also, while we're while I'm finishing this up, please put in the comments, um, put in the comments a couple things. One, I would love to know if any of this, if you learned anything interesting today that maybe you hadn't known before. The second is, um, are there any skills or supplies that you are really curious about that maybe I can start talking about? I'm actually going to work on a couple new things. I might dive a little bit into some acrylic stuff. For a little bit I'm gonna be doing a pet portrait uh, and I'm gonna be taking you guys along the ride because I'm making one for my granny um, and just kind of showing you how I do that but I do that with acrylic uh, so we are gonna be seeing some different acrylic stuff coming up but it, it, I won't be like transitioning to, to a acrylic only type thing so Ideas for abstracts, yeah. Let's put a little yellow in there. You mostly do landscapes in outer space? Ooh, outer space. I've been thinking of and wanting to paint some. I actually started a series at the very beginning of 2020 that I never fully finished, but I was painting all of the planets. I think I made it, I did everything but like, I don't think I got to uh, Earth, but I did, I think all, basically all the rest of the planets. Oh, the the, uh, the feather one, sure, yeah, of course. Hold on, I just got the one, one left to do. Oh, we got lots of dripping water there. I think I'm gonna do one more with the metallics, and then we'll be able to we'll be able to see the metallic shinies um, in a second as well on at least some of the earlier ones. I'm gonna put in a little. This is my last one. purple in there. There we go. I'm going to call that one good. Here is the completed piece, uh, or completed-ish. I might come back in later and mess with um, adding in some more, because I, I kind of like the idea of the negative space. And I've also dripped everywhere, so that might ruin that. Let's see how much I can get of that off real quick with a little water. There we go. That's it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Put 
All right, so we're, we've got a couple things to revisit. One, this is this is what's going to be my completed project for today's class. Uh, let's look and see if we can see the the shine. Oh, you can see. Can you see up here how that kind of shines? Oh, it looks really cool in person. I don't know how well it's looking on camera, but you can see some of the metallics shine through. I am glad you guys chose the purples. Something about this color combination is very satisfying. Um, the other thing we wanted to see were, somebody wanted to see like the feathers. So if anybody needed to take a screenshot of the feathers, if you're like, I was gonna try to do that. I do think I'll do a video on this as well. Um, but if you're like, nope, I got it. This live has basically helped me figure out how you're gonna do all this stuff. Um, here is the picture. You can take a screenshot. I'm gonna give you about five more seconds. Uh, it's not a stencil. I just cut a little piece of paper into the shape of a hexagon. You can use stencils. I just, I don't have any. Okay, the next thing we were going to do is look to see if this color was granulating. Um, I need to visually inspect it a little bit first. So you can see in a couple areas, especially like right along here that it has granulated. I wouldn't say this is a particularly granulating color, but you can see it separated out into some little like crags here. So this one is kind of granulating. All right, any other questions before we head out? I do want to say uh, that I really appreciate you guys spending this time with me and I hope that you had fun and relaxed or learned something or just had a little bit of fun chatting. Um, I really do appreciate the time we spend together and I like painting with you guys. So I'm glad that you could join me. What am I having for lunch? I usually make like a late breakfast after these. So I usually make some eggs uh, and I did make some fresh bread last night. So I might have some of that too. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you guys had fun. Uh, if you have a, if you have questions on how I kind of started this whole thing, I do have a couple videos on my page where I show the beginning steps. This slide was a lot focused on how to kind of fill the colors in and the slower moving parts of that that I can't really fit into a thing, but I have lots of details on how to create the little pattern and stuff like that. So I really appreciate your guys' time and I hope that you have an absolutely fabulous rest of your day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And I will see you guys in a couple week. weeks, two weeks, yeah. <laughs>